note to everybody in the call, we're now recording this meeting. Um, and we were just starting with the question if um, anyone would like to experience meaningless work weeks. So we have one um, hand by Jan who said it feels unproductive to have meetings. I'd rather be working. Um, anyone else who raised their hands? Meaningless work weeks. Why would you why, why would you like to experience this? I saw, yeah, Timbal. Some kind of uh, uninterrupted focus. Uninterrupted focus. So it feels like you're losing focus when doing meetings. Yeah, something like that. Something. Has anyone here experienced bad meetings? Yeah. Okay. Just uh, just give me a couple of shouts. Why were they bad? Bad meetings. What what are they all about? No goal. No interaction. No interaction. Just people sending stuff. Exactly. No conclusion. No conclusion. So it feels like you're walking away with nothing. Um, sorry. Yeah. Exactly. So, or could have been dealt with a mill or something like that. Exactly. So. Um, for me and other people within Xomnia as well, this was quite relatable. Um, and we felt like, okay, we can do better. Um, and in order to learn something about this, how to organize better meetings, we, uh, we uh, took part, partook in a course, uh, a facilitation course um, on leading groups online and offline. Um, it was a course by a company called Mischief Makers. So, there are a bunch of folks who are a facilitation agency. Um, I didn't know such a thing existed, but apparently they're quite uh, popular and uh, successful in guiding groups um, to have interactive, engaged, and meaningful uh, work experiences. So it's like the, the, the most broader sense of the, uh, the word. Um, and we uh, did a 10-week course in order to uh, learn how to do um, uh, how to have better meetings, uh, workshops, and stuff like that. Um, so what are we going to be doing today? Today I would like to walk you guys through some of the uh, methods and tools and tricks that we learned in these 10 weeks um, in order to better facilitate groups. So what we would like to achieve uh, after these 30 minutes is that uh, you guys feel more empowered to, uh, to tweak your next meetings. So we're going to bring that into the weekend and apply it as of next week. Um, to do so, we're going to be looking at a couple things. First one is the ID art. Then we're going to be looking at session flow. We're going to do a little tool safari. Uh, we're going to be talking about the run sheet or dry book in Dutch. And then we're going to close off with a couple of group dynamics. Um, I'm going to be a presenter, so I hope to keep it as interactive as possible, but uh, I cannot get around the fact that I'm going to be sending a couple things. Um, but um, yeah, I'd like to uh, challenge you to be active listeners. So if you have any questions or if you have any objections or if you think this is bullshit or whatever, uh, don't be shy. Just uh, throw it out there. So those are a couple of rules. Um, yeah, like I said, we're going to be having uh, 30 minutes in order to achieve all this. Um, and probably for you scherpe mensen, active listeners out there, um, we had a little thing called IDWART on the, on the agenda. Uh, well, let that be the first order of business. And the first trick uh, that I want to give you today. Um, so I think one of the things that were shouted in here uh, was about uh, meetings not having goals, unclear what we're going to be doing together. Um, so a good, um, well, best practice is to always start your meetings or your work workshops or whatever with something like this. So I for intention and the rest you can figure out. Um, what this does is it brings the group together uh, on the same page, <coughs> what we're gonna be doing for the next X time. Um, and it takes away any confusion or fuzziness about what we're actually trying to achieve here. Um, so that helps. So it seems like an open door. Probably I'm gonna be kicking in quite some open doors today. Um, but um, yeah, um, we've been applying this over the past months and it's really, it's really showing in our client work as well. Um, the second thing I want to be talking about is session flow. Um, and um, what I mean with flow, it looks something like this. Um, well, you couldn't 
uh, figure a more uh, basic thing for data scientists. Um, but in this case, it means that each meeting should have a launch, exploration, and a landing. And I'm not sure what the y-axis means here, but probably something like group engagement or something. Um, if you're going to be applying this, this flow to all your meetings, even short ones, it really helps structure and getting the group on, you know, where you want them to be. Um, you're going to start your launch with a couple of things like raising hands, I do art, explaining what you're going to be doing today. And then you're going to be moving on to exploring the actual topics that you want to be talking about and the things you want to be achieving. And afterwards, you're going to be taking the group back to the earth uh, and um, making sure that everybody walks away with a couple takeaways. You're going to be doing a recap. You're going to be doing Q&A and stuff like that. So this is something that we call group session flow or meeting flow or whatever. And for each of these stages, there are a couple um, exercises or um, activities that, you're, that you can apply. I see a couple here, something like a check-in or a warm-up. You could call what we were doing just now, you could call that a warm-up. Um, but also think about something like a role play or uh, knowledge sharing that can be like the the core of the meeting that you want to be doing. And like I said, talking about landing, takeaways, checkout, a recap of what we did today. Um, so that really helps. I'm going to be racing through these topics quite fast because we have limited time. But if you feel like we're going too fast, just raise your hand and let me know. So you saw, you saw a couple exercises that were put in here, a whole lot of exercises. So where do we get these exercises? Where do we get the inspiration for what works in what stage of a meeting and whatnot? Um, luckily for us, there are a couple of tools and uh, exercise libraries available um, that we can just uh, utilize in our, uh, when creating these kinds of experiences. Um, the Mischief Maker group um, also has their own something that they call Facilipedia, uh, which is something that you can browse and just take away some of the, uh, the exercises that you can apply in different parts of your meeting. Um, another thing is something called Toolbox Toolbox. So it's a toolbox for toolboxes. Um, it includes something like returning to work, how to work in a hybrid fashion, uh, but it also includes something like how to um, organize online meetings, for example. So they have a bunch of manuals, etc., that you can use as guidelines when you know, creating these kind of uh, uh, online events. Um, Hyper Island, I'm not sure if you guys know it. We also did some work for them. Um, they have, well, it's kind of a, a library that you can filter, et cetera, and just uh, take whatever you want. It's quite extensive, uh, pretty, pretty good. Um, uh, nice things that are that you can also filter on group size, how much time you want to be spending it on, et cetera, et cetera. For me, this was quite a well, an eye-opener, that so much free stuff is actually out there when you're going to be, uh, well, uh, writing these things. Um, and Session Lab is the last one I want to mention. Uh, it's basically, uh, well, uh, a mix of it all. You see a bunch of Hyper Island things here as well. So lots of good stuff that you can just browse through and get inspiration from. Um, and last but not least, um, probably all of you guys know it, but... Um, Mural and Miro are online whiteboarding tools that, well, at least I use a lot um, in order to get people to work together online. So we don't have to draw on a scrap of paper and use the webcam to present it or something. Um, but you also have other tools for things you want to achieve. Uh, for example, yesterday with uh, Zacharia, uh, we used a tool called, uh, what was it? Play IT Poker? Planet Poker. Planet Poker, exactly. Mm -hmm. The goal of the meeting was uh, to, um, well, involve a bunch of business stakeholders, tool users, um, and have them tell us what they found important in order to structure our work and prioritize our work for the upcoming weeks. Um, there are a couple ways that you can do uh, that you can do that, um, but we figured it might be nice to use an online tool, um, well, just to have them play around with it a little bit. It's a little game, gamey, like play, Planet Poker. Um, but what we ended up with uh, within an hour is that we had our work, which was quite an extensive list of uh, things that we needed to do, structured according to their business needs. So it's a nice 
playful way uh, to, to achieve your desired outcome. All right, moving on to the fourth one. It's uh, the mighty run sheet or dry book. So we have a um, uh, structure of the things that we want to achieve in our meeting, the I do art. We have a flow in order to do so. We have a bunch of exercises that we can draw inspiration from in order to actually achieve the goal. But how do we structure that? Well, this is what we use a dry book or run sheet for. Um, it's, well, it's super clear, right? Everybody can read it. Um, this is always where, yeah, the, the technology fails a little bit. Um, but what we do when organizing workshops, at least after doing this course uh, within, the, uh, within the AT team, we take some time to structure all the exercises that we wanted to do and really prepare the time that we want to uh, drive for each one of these exercises. You see launch, explore, land with a couple activities, start time and end time, a description. Um, but not just that, we, uh, we also um, include stuff like the platform where you're doing hybrid sessions online and offline. Um, facilitator notes, especially if you're co-facilitating with someone, you want to have sort of an interaction and uh, switching off and on between the, the, the different folks. Um, it might seem a little overkill uh, to do this, but it actually helps me uh, to, uh, to keep my nerves at bay when, uh, when prepping a meeting. Um, for me, it's always, if I feel prepped, I have no nerves during a meeting. And a run sheet is something that helps me uh, get this feeling. So I can highly recommend it. Um, I mentioned the word hybrid a couple times already. Um, so, of course, in especially the past two years, um, you see, well, either online or offline meetings or a combination of both. A run sheet is also a pretty good way to um, sort of prep these interactions. I see stuff like ping pong. So it can be that you're pinging back and forth between the, the offline group and the online group. Same situation that we have here. Um, and you want to sometimes, you know, do stuff together using a camera, et cetera, et cetera. So the run sheet is a way to prep that. Um, I don't know about you guys, but um, I tend to over-prepare. Um, one of the learnings from the Mischief Maker course is that I sometimes need to quote unquote, embrace chaos. Um, because if you're exercising too much control, for example, by over prepping a run sheet, um, it tends to get out of control anyway, because people will get confused, you're trying too hard to keep track of time and uh, cut off discussions that are actually quite meaningful, etc, which will result in chaos anyway. If you're able to let go of that, um, and well, sort of uh, believe or have trust in the capability of the, of the group to get through, uh, to get to some conclusions themselves, um, that will result in control in a natural manner. So this is a learning for me. And one of my main takeaways of this, um, uh, this course that we did is that sometimes in workshops and stuff like that, you can trust a group to get to a certain conclusion. All right, um, the fifth, um, tool that I want to um, well uh, end this um, this expert session with um, is something on group dynamics. <clears throat> um, as you as you know, um, work is usually done in groups. Um, uh, whether it be you know you're working on like I don't know uh, a certain model or you're working on a presentation. Um, I think. Few of us really work in isolation. Um, and I think um, for this session, it might be good to give you guys uh, this, is that each group goes through a certain number of stages um, in their development. Um, and this is a model that you can use for that. It's something by Susan Wheeler. It's called the Integrative Model of Group Development, IMGD, which basically says um, each group goes through five stages and you can summarize them as forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. Um, the first stage is about being dependent on each other. It requires strong leadership. 
in order to actually you know understand each other and get together to work um, the second stage is about uh, conflict where people are confident enough to actually um, you know uh, uh, have discussions about things and uh, to speak up on things if they see don't see eye to eye on those the subsequent stage is about trust structure where people are no longer have conflicts and are starting to work together in the proper way. And the fourth stage is where, well, um, if you're lucky, each group goes uh, where high performance is achieved, after which um, there's closure. So each, each group stage also needs to uh, have an ending. Um, if you keep this in mind when designing meetings or workshops, etc., cetera, um, um, that's quite useful to determine which exercise you want to be applying for this session. Um, you can understand that if you're in stage four, which is about high performance, the focus is really on celebrating, um, uh, you know, uh, focusing on the fact that you've achieved something. Um, and similarly, you can also imagine that if you're designing a, a workshop or a meeting or a session, for a group that's in stage two, where there's lots of conflict, which is quite useful, by the way, you don't want to be focusing on celebration, where you're going to be digitally high-fiving each other when there's like a, you know, a, a little war going on. That's a little yeah awkward if you're going to be doing it like that. Um, and um, um, yeah, that's something I want to um, give you guys here. Um, I've included a, hyper or a link to... Um, an article which goes really in depth on this uh, topic. So if you're interested, you can dive into that. Um, and I want to leave it at that because I don't think we have that much time left. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, one of the things that you learn from this course when prepping these kinds of meetings is be a time pessimist. So um, I'm not sure if you guys recognize this, but um, unprepped meetings tend to go overboard in terms of time, which is really freaking annoying. Um, if you're going to be prepping stuff like this, you tend to not overrun on time, which is a win-win situation. Okay, so what are we going to be doing now? Landing, right? We have five minutes left, so I guess it's a good time to uh, start the descent once again. Um, I'm going to start with a couple of takeaways as a summary or recap of this um, this uh, session that you can apply as of next week. So I'm looking forward to hear your guys' uh, good experiences with this. Start your meetings with an ID art. Design meetings according to a session flow. Use the many nice tools available in order to get inspiration on how to structure these meetings and then actually structure, structure your meetings using a run sheet of, the, of which there are plenty templates around, even with Insomnia. And last, consider the different stages of group development when actually designing a session for a certain group.